Hi ladies, happy Wednesday. We are talking about the impacts of vaginal birth on your pelvic floor today, specifically the three Ps of pushing, positioning, and prolapse. And don't worry, look, childbirth is an incredibly impactful experience in every woman's life. It changes you forever. This is a conversation based on research and data. We're sticking to the numbers to empower you with knowledge about maybe helping you connect yeah. the dots between something you're experiencing now after your baby was born and that actual birth experience that seems to kind of get glossed over for a lot of women when really it's important. We're sticking to those numbers to help you connect the dots and to help you know what to do next and how to move forward. Yeah, and please don't feel guilty or judged as we go through the specifics and the nitty gritty because we are gonna be getting into the data in this show. We have vastly different birth experiences. I suffered traumatic birth injuries with my first delivery 17 years ago. Christina had a pretty, what you might think of as picture perfect delivery, although not easy with her first, and then a much different birth experience with her second delivery. And then Jen also had two C-sections after that. So we yeah. have a vast array of experience just between the two of us and our five birth experiences. So this is not about judgment. This is about empowering you with knowledge and information based on actual real data and research. Yeah, and the data that we're gonna be quoting from today, just for any other science junkies, this is actually called the biomechanics of vaginal birth. So that's the deal. Super informative and it can be very empowering. So we wanna start with pushing. How you push matters. Um, I know Jen, you feel like you were instructed 17 years ago yes. to push and bear down um, with what she would call purple pushing. So it's hold, like holding your hold breath. Your breath. And like, <laughs> the Valsalva maneuver is also what it's called like an exercise. Yes. Um, but we know Balancing pressure is incredibly important for your pelvis and your pelvic floor, and that includes during pushing and delivery, which means breathing is also incredibly important to protect those tissues. Yeah, it actually increases the amount of pressure, as you would imagine with delivering a baby, almost five times with that purple pushing, which can put you at greater risk for prolapse, specifically if you're pushing for longer than two hours yes, in that second stage of statistically, delivery. Statistically, yeah. Yes. If you're pushing for more than two hours, you are at a statistically greater risk for dealing with some sort of prolapse, and that would be my case. I push for two and a half hours with number one, and I do have a bit of a rectocele. I'm very lucky I've escaped with just that. But point is, that's statistically factual that if you push for more than two hours, you're more likely to deal with some sort of prolapse at some point. Yeah, and then the position that you deliver matters. And I loved the way they quoted it in this research, which is basically if you're delivering on your back with your feet elevated, it does actually narrow the bony passage, the birth canal. And so, you know, with that purple pushing and that narrowed birth canal, you can see why this might set you up for greater injuries like myself. <laughs> so there are positions that actually help open that yes. birth canal, which will decrease pressure and injury for risk of pressure and injury for you. One of those is side lying. One of those is squatting and another is on hands and knees. And with my first delivery, I was blessed to deliver with the wonderful midwife and doula. And I did experience labor and pushing in many of those positions. And that was a blessing and probably helped protect me a great deal. So these choices totally do have an impact on that statistical risk of injury for your pelvis and pelvic floor. And then other, other things that we need to talk baby about that are risk factors are the position that your baby actually comes out. So for me, both of my babies came out sunny side up. Oh, wait, no, yours were regular. Mine were right? regular, <laughs> yours were okay. <laughs> See, we're so close that we just, our, our stories we, meld into one another. Our five birth stories are all just one big picture at this point. <laughs> so, Mine were regular, yours were okay. <laughs> so uh, what we mean are regular is that the back of the baby's head is actually facing the front of your pelvis. But for me, both of mine were born what they call sunny side up, which back of the head is facing the rectal side of the pelvic bowl. That actually, now there's only so much you can do to control the position sure. that the baby comes out in. But that it, it's helpful to know that moving forward so that you understand the things that happen in your childbirth experience that may or may not lead to some of these issues and symptoms yeah. and 
prolapse like we talk about. So both of my babies happened to actually be born sunny side up, which did put a lot more pressure on the rectal side of my pelvic bowl, which explains the rectocele. And to me, that's helpful to know that it actually all makes sense with what occurred. The other thing with babies, babies unique characteristics is the size of yeah. your baby. This is not a stretch to imagine. A larger babe, birth weight baby puts you at greater risk for pelvic floor or larger issues. head size yep. as well. My second, thank God I didn't deliver him vaginally because he was in the hundredth percentile <laughs> with his head size. So that makes a, that makes a difference with prolapse. The other thing that are risk factors, which is ultimately for me, what probably created the most damage was the use of forceps and a vacuum. And there is a particular way that those instruments should be used to minimize damage to that tissue. Unfortunately for me, I had been pushing for almost three hours and the baby really did need to get out. And so the, the use of those tools were really to try to save my son. And, um, and so that created a lot of damage that created a fourth degree tear for me and um, multiple um, injuries due to that. Uh but Jen has turned all that suffering into her passion and her mission, and that is why we're here with you. So, so many of life's challenges turn into unique blessings and unique yeah. ways that we can be present for each other. And we're so grateful to share this with you today because that is what we've chosen to do. There's so many more things that we could talk about on this topic. We still have several pages of notes that we wanted to get into. But we would love to answer any questions that you may have about your vaginal delivery, maybe um, things that you've noticed since delivery that maybe you've talked to your doctor about and they haven't really been able to give you a straight answer. Um, we'd love to hear that from you. So if you wanna pop that in the comments below or you can certainly private message us. Um, the other thing that is worth mentioning is if you are experiencing prolapse and maybe some of you might be experiencing symptoms of that and not realize that it's prolapse a lot of pressure a lot of heaviness in your lower abdomen maybe you notice that you feel like something is protruding a bulge is a often bulge. another term that many women use to describe the discomfort yep. you have a pressure a bulge and it also often comes along with back pain or any of the bowel and bladder stuff we've talked about pain with intimacy pain yep. with trying to wear a tampon the good news is we've got to leave you on this high note. Even if you're experiencing any or all of that, parts of it, all of it, doesn't matter. There is hope and there are resources. We've yeah. specifically designed our signature program to help. And it is possible to get better and to improve even years later. Yes, 17 years later, I still continue to heal and improve. And I just wanna put this out there. This is something that really helped me tremendously during um, my pregnancy, if you have dealt with vulva varicosities or you're dealing with those feelings of pressure and prolapse, this V2 supporter, you can order it online on Amazon and it will provide some initial relief. Now, keep in mind, this is a Band-Aid. This is not a permanent solution, but it will help reduce some of the discomfort that you might be experiencing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here with us. Birth is an incredibly emotional thing and I have a lot of feelings about it and I know so does Jen. And it is often glossed over by even medical providers as a blip on yeah. the story of your life's timeline and that is not at all the case. It is a momentous event to carry and birth another human. It's a blessing that we get to do this and create life, but it has a dramatic impact on the rest of your life. And it's okay to admit that, and it's okay to ask for and seek help for the discomforts that may arise because you've been through this incredible and insanely intense experience. So if yeah. you feel unheard, if you feel your concerns weren't listened to or validated, please know there's, there's another way, there's more answers, there's help out there. So bring on those questions, like Jen said. We're gonna continue talking about a lot of these related topics, because um, that's what we're here to do, to help in that way. Thanks for watching, ladies.